Good morning. It is day two in Oslo and we've taken a walking tour of the city, uh, going around uh, with a guide so he can introduce us to Oslo. So today's vlog, you're going to see us walking through the city. We're going to be going to the Viking uh, Museum so we can learn about Vikings and then we'll do several other things uh, around the city. So welcome back. So please don't forget to like and subscribe if you haven't already as we walk around and explore this city, Oslo. Lovely city. Lovely. Yeah, because a lot of y'all that watch these videos aren't subscribed. That's not cool, man. Come on. What's what's going on? Like you watching the videos, you pressing like, but why are you not subscribed? What's with that? Yeah, what he said. See, what he said. What see he said what I there? mean? Even the man off the street is saying that. I don't oh, know who yeah, that was. Yeah. He just jumped <laughs> into my camera, but he wants you to subscribe. <laughs> so why don't you subscribe? Because there will be several other people jumping in if you don't. So uh, <laughs> please like and subscribe and help us grow our channel. Thank you. So today we're going to make sense of all the sites that we saw yesterday that we couldn't explain. Uh, that's why we have a guide with us today. So we're going to revisit some of the sites that we saw yesterday and hopefully explain to you what they are. Because yesterday we seemed kind of, kind of uh, um, out of place. Now we have to take the basics first because as you saw modern Oslo uh, yesterday and then where we're going, then uh, modern Oslo uh, is actually also where Oslo was founded. A little further beyond that, uh, beyond the opera and all that, uh, at the hill over there, Oslo was founded in 1048. Um, during the Viking Age, the last pagan king of Norway, the last Viking king, uh, made Oslo his residence, uh, King Harald the Firm, Harald Hårhård. So, um, but apart from two churches and uh, the king's little castle, it was an old wooden town. So fire was an ever returning occurrence and after a city fire in 1624, King Christian IV, that is on the square over there, uh, refounded Oslo or moved Oslo uh, here under the protective wings of the fortress. There's a fortress down, um, down at the fjord here. So in 1624 we have what we now call the old town, uh, but it's not the oldest old town because that is over there. Very confusing this with moving Oslo and then changing <laughs> location. Uh, but that was that was uh, um, uh, not only a wooden not only the wooden houses uh, were destroyed, but also the the um, two churches and the king's castle. Uh, there's only ruin left on the ruins left of that. So there's very little of old Oslo. That is one of the oldest streets in Oslo because this leads in eastern direction out to the farming areas, and there uh, the farmers would come in bring their goods um, to, to market the market square, yeah. have out the meats, uh, the eggs, the vegetables in the open. And if they hadn't sold it for 10 hours, I'm exaggerating maybe a little bit, if they hadn't sold it for 10 hours, they would simply grab it, go back and come back the next day, open up again. <laughs> the uh, city of Oslo constructed these bazaars around the cathedral and uh, uh, in connection with the market square. Had all the trade of meat and that sort of thing inside, under control and that helped with the uh, hygienic circumstances okay. uh, by sure. the, uh, that's where a lot of people must have gotten sick from eating yeah, yeah. several day old meat yeah uh, I imagine that the death rate would have dropped severely yeah. in the past yeah. in the next two or three years <laughs> yeah. or so. um, no just to mention you see that that's the oldest part of this this is a department store all connected inside uh, so there you see how they a, um, the first two, the, the, the one in the middle, not too bad, 1890s, uh, uh, both of them. But then you have that um, uh, that building there from, from, I think it's 1977, if I'm not totally wrong. So there you see. And uh, now the market square here, today is just a flower market, but this was the commercial center of Oslo in, in the 17th century. And uh, the founding father here, or rather the re-founding father, Christian IV, uh, pointing his finger down to the ground saying this is where I want Oslo to be located uh, re-founding the city 1624 Does not remind you of Guernica? 
Yes, it does that, remind me of Guernica. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, well, we can. We can, I can tell you about that. That is the city scene from above. It's a fantasy oh. of the city oh, wow. where you got houses and buildings and, and uh, different. Uh, uh, okay. Houses. Um, there are not that many round buildings in Oslo, so it is a fantasy of the city. Yeah. This street here was the city center. From the central railway station down there to the green in the background, that's the Royal Gardens that you saw yesterday. Yeah. Now, this is Carl Johan Street, um, the main street of Oslo. And uh, up until recently, this was, this was it, more or less. There are certain, say, region of uh, city centers in, in elsewhere in the city, but um, this was the main street and um, Oslo is growing. Oslo is, according to the city council, growing faster in percentage, faster than any other city in, in all of Europe. And therefore we need more space. Now it is Sunday morning and uh, not many people are, but yeah, uh, and if you saw yesterday a different Carl Johan Street, uh, it is it is crowded and therefore it is nice that we now have that extension of the inner city, that area where the opera is, uh, we will sort of have twice the, the city centre uh, because also or Carl Johan Street is from the 1840s when Oslo was a somewhat smaller uh, city. Do they have tigers in Norway? Oh yes. <laughs> <laughs> uh, we got Oslo one in Oslo. Is a tiger, according to a poem, I just learned. Accor according to a poem, Oslo is the tiger. Oh. Um, you're going. You're going out in the countryside. You're going north, and you're going west, and you're going to see a different type of, uh, of a Norwegian life. Uh, half the Norwegian population, 5.5 million, so we are not that many. Half of, of the Norwegians, however, are living within three-hour car drive of Oslo. And out in the countryside, uh, the population density is low. And in 1882, uh, our national poet Björn Stjerne Björnsson, uh, he himself lived out in the countryside, what today would be about a three hour car drive of Oslo, but in those days must have taken a day or maybe two. Um, and, and he uh, came to Oslo in 1882 um, with one of the very first trains to arrive in Oslo here at the Central yeah, Railway Station. Like so he came out here and um, uh, met Oslo. And then he wrote a poem about this by and by, where he uh, um, compared himself to an old horse from the countryside, an old horse that met the tiger, Oslo. Uh, and with that he meant that Oslo is, is beautiful, uh, but also dangerous. And that then became, by and by, um, uh, the phrase that people living outside Oslo use of Oslo. Oh, they call okay. it the tiger town, we don't call it yeah. that ourselves. Yeah. Yeah. Because if you can imagine what it would be like to not live in Oslo or in Washington, but living in a small village, three, four, five hundred inhabitants. Like you, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Bring it to yeah. college. Right, like some, some place like that. <laughs> and then you would come by train and you would walk out uh, the main entrance into Oslo. And you would be like, oh, wow, look at all those buildings. This it's is, city, oh, this oh is beautiful. Goodness. But then, okay, it's Sunday now, but uh, on a normal day, if you look up Carl Johan, it will be Well, crowded. yesterday, when we were walking, it like later in the day, it was it packed. Was packed. Yeah, it is. Yeah. yeah. And then, of course, with three, four, five hundred inhabitants in your village, you will, in that uh, frame it's there, the you, you yeah. see three uh, times uh, the, the number of inhabitants in yeah. your village. Yeah. So you say, oh, look at all those people. That might be dangerous. Yeah, yeah. Beautiful, but dangerous. And therefore, people outside Oslo call Oslo still the tiger town, the tiger city, after the poem of, of Jonsson. What is that? Looks like a finger. Look. Mm, we'll walk a little bit down to the uh, high rise yeah, floor yeah, house there. Yeah. It's just a simple design. But it's huh? It's, it's simple, but it's that's what I'm saying. If you look at it, it's very simple, but when you put it all together, it becomes something else. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So like, wow, really? I love this building. I think this building is so cool. This is our new library. Library, yeah. 
um, that is also again an example of, of architecture being art. Oh, look at the inside. Yeah. Oh, oh, nice. And this is a public library downtown Oslo. Very pretty space. Very nicely decorated lights the atrium there and just the spaces around it's beautiful If those metal crosses are yeah. old in the building, then, then I'm really, I don't want to yeah, be here. <laughs> yeah. so, so this is all decoration, this is all architecture. If you then look across here now, you don't see, uh, you only see those two high rises. Yeah. That's the tallest and the second tallest building in the entire. The fifth tallest here. Then. So which one's the tallest? That's the tallest. The, the glass building, uh, the hotel. There. The Radisson. That's the tallest. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> don't laugh. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's, that's kind of cool though. I like that. <laughs> then they made some um, some dispensations to that rule, those two buildings, and also a couple of others here and there. But most of our slope is under six stories. And then this came up. Yeah. You live up there? On a mountain top. All I, I like that too. That's part of why I like DC so much because it's like the, like you can see nature mm -hmm. every week. Yeah. Whereas like you go to a city like New York. That's a pretty cool name, the barcode. That's the name given to these buildings because they sort of look like a barcode. So it was given to the buildings by the public, and now it's the official name of this development here with this cluster of high rises because they look like a barcode so they now yeah no now you know it looks pretty neat i like the architecture in this city it's uh, modern but not hideous so and it's so just uh, simple uh, shapes that when put together they become an elegant form of art so i like that thing in the top there that sort of swings like an acrobat. It doesn't move but it, it looks like a swinging acrobat or could, could be um, in, in yeah, interpreted be, as yeah. an acrobat. Yeah. Interesting. Interesting. 
but it's a it's a really very visually interesting space mm, mm. and and terrific examples of, of engaging modern architecture so. different architects on, on these houses than the brick buildings on the other side. Yeah. And um, oh, this is a great shot of the Munch Museum too. Yeah, yeah. That's then again a third artist, uh, architect because they they deliberately wanted uh, uh, another expression than what you have out there in that residential area. They are more or less the same. Uh, and you see they're not high rises but they are more or less the same material, the same type yeah. of uh, even though they've got different colors, they, they look more or less the same. They wanted to avoid that here. Therefore, the barcode, 10 buildings, totally different each one of them. Yeah. And also the residential uh, yeah. home, uh, houses, buildings here, different. Uh, so I'm guessing these residences are expensive. You're guessing right. Yeah. They buy the water, they're close to everything else. Yeah, they're, yeah. Close, they're close to the train station. Yeah, definitely. Condos or apartments? Apartments. Do you know the rent is like? Yeah, well, um, well then there, there, it is. Um, in Oslo, we have uh, today an average price of, uh, say, uh, 75,000 Norwegian kroner per square meter uh, real estate. That's average, which is what, $700, $7,000. Is that a month? Uh, no, that's, that's buying, that's buying real oh, estate. Buying. Yeah. I'm saying the cost per square foot. Yeah, per square meter. That's square meter. that's the average. Here you can um, double that, triple that in certain of uh, the more fancy ones directly on the waterfront. You said 75,000 kroner. 75,000 kroner per square meter. Per square meter. Yeah. And those are like what, maybe like? Uh, they would be like, uh, let's say 20,000 US dollars per square meter buying. So up there... Uh, and so the average would be like how many square meters? Um, they... That, um, Average, I do not know. You got some small ones here, and you got some uh, like studios, uh, two bedrooms, three yeah, bedrooms. Yeah, yeah. Two. If, if you have a three-bedroom apartment here, that would probably cost you in the neighborhood of uh, 1.5 million US dollars to buy. To buy. Yeah. Okay, I'm out. <laughs> Bye. Then we have what is a problem in, in Norway with all the wealth and the oil is that uh, people of well, my generation is a little bit older. They have made a lot of money their entire life. Now they are retired. And that meant that they started some 20 years ago um, buying, saving, and now they have bought a second home that they do not use. And uh, then they rent it, uh, rent it out. And, and they, they will, well, that will of course raise the prices, both on buying property, but also um, the rent will go. And that is a problem here in the modern uh, modern past that very few people or not very many people can can uh, can uh, afford it uh, these homes neither to buy nor to rent. So I have a really basic question. I know Norway is all made up of fjords, right? This is mm. a fjord. Mm. Does the fjord mean the waterway, or does the fjord mean the mountain, or is it both? Or? No, it's the water. The water. Okay. Uh, people can, when I say uh, welcome to the Oslo fjord, people look at me and say, "What? The, the, where, where are the mountains?" Now yeah, you don't have to necessarily have the mountains for a fjord. A fjord is um, geologically uh, the definition of a fjord is that it is a body of water that was dug out uh, by the retreating ice uh, 8,000 years ago. Okay. Um, now we're talking about 2,000 meters of ice uh, in a period of 4,000 years. I cannot even imagine that. Right. I've read it, I wasn't around, so I don't know yeah. if this is true, yeah. but that is what I say. <laughs> and with that slowly retreating ice, it simply dug its way into solid rocks, created a hole, and the, the, the ice melted and then you filled the hole and you, you have a body of water in a hole dug out by the ice. Okay. Therefore, you do not necessarily have to have the high mountains uh, to have a fjord. Okay. So this is... But it tends to be a narrow... Um, narrowish... Yeah, it, it gets narrower. The, the, you know, in, in southern Norway, in the middle, there's still a huge uh, remnant of that glacier. That was here 8,000 years ago. It's the same same location in the middle, yeah. and that that uh, the, the ice retreated inward um, towards the center, and therefore the, the fjord gets narrower 
the, the closer to uh, to the, the midland you get, sort of, mm. so to speak. Very roughly speaking, that is. But uh, and then you have, of course, different types of, of rocks. Um, certain rocks will give way easier to this ice process. Uh, others uh, won't. So you will have islands. You will have land tongues where it is more solid rock, and therefore it was not uh, um, sort of. Um, polished away by, by the ice. Okay. But they do get narrower uh, the further in. Okay. If you look at the map of Oslo or the Oslo Fjord, you'll see clearly that the Oslo Fjord goes like this, then it goes into a very narrow strait and then it opens up again here in the inner, uh, the inner part. Fjords are, uh, occur everywhere there's, where there's glaciers. They just call it something else. Yeah. Right. Can yeah. A, uh, Canadian yeah. fjord, New Zealand, Scotland. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, South America. Yeah. But fjord is the Norwegian word for. It's it. the and Norwegian and word. Yeah. Has become yeah. the, the uh, sort of uh, international phrase for, yep. for that yeah. podium. Yeah. yeah. And I like the word fjord. It sounds like Ford, but not really. <laughs> <laughs> you said it sounds like Ford. Yeah, but not really. Not really. <laughs> fjord, like spell it. F spell fjord. F-J-O-R-G. See? It, the only difference is there's a J in there. F-J-O-R-G. I'm dyslexic. There's just a J in there. That's all. Just put the J in there. Put a J in every English word and you speak Norwegian. Yeah, you speak Norwegian, yeah. And, and, the, and sometimes there's like six consonants before you get to vowels. <laughs> that always confuses me. Speaking of language, you know, the Norwegian, Swedish, and Danish are very similar languages. We, we understand one another. Um, but Norway yeah, Officially, this is called Venice uh, due to the canals where you have um, uh, the possibility of sailing to your apartment or to the restaurant here uh, with a boat. And uh, um, yeah, you go over there. The entrance, that's not the main yeah. entrance to the rest of the entrance to say, but still. That's interesting, that's like a mini Venice. <laughs> you can get there by boat. Oh, you can swim there. You can see from the steps there. <laughs> it's uh, cool. Pretty cool. What a concept. And this is the Munch Museum, right? Yeah. I believe we'll be going there later this week or this afternoon. When are we going there? I think we're going tomorrow. Tomorrow. And Munch is the one that painted the scream, which has many versions. Uh, you know, I thought the scream was just one copy, but he painted many copies, uh, different versions of the depiction of the scream. So, just learned that here. I didn't know he was from Norway. Now I do. So we're gonna go see that. Um, that was one very important feature in the development of this because this uh, this area um, was owned by by, by the city. Mm -hmm. The company that owned the port was called Oslo Havn, uh, the port of Oslo, and that means that this was public property. That means that uh, selling it out to private um, real estate agents and, and the constructors uh, would have been a little bit of a problem um, if they hadn't thought about a very important principle in Norway, and that is what we call Allemansraten, or, or the right to roam, which means that um, uh, what they've done here now is that you can see the houses there, of course, obviously, you own your apartment, but all public spaces around it, down at the waterfront, are accessible to the population. No admission, free of charge and everything, because this is still 
a public uh, uh, property. That's nice. Uh, this is sort of my land. I pay my taxes and uh, I own this. So welcome to my land. No, oh, thank welcome you. Thank you for the invitation. I like that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And you and have it all, all along out there, the same thing, um, all over. Yeah. You can walk along the waterfront because that is public uh, property. You cannot buy this. That's, that's very nice. Yeah. <laughs> he, he's like he's like make way it's like make way for the tiger I rule this town Oh, so what is it? A glacier. Opera House is built, the shape is built to mimic a glacier. Okay. Yeah. And when this freezes in the winter, which it does, you get that sense of there's the frozen fjord and then the glacier. Oh, okay. So what is this art here? What then, is that? Then that is also connected to that idea because if you add uh, ice and, and, um, and snow to the scenery, then you can see that that is an iceberg that has broken off from the glacier and floats in the fjord. In the summertime, you do need that explanation to, uh, to figure out what it is. It is not just uh, an installation of, of uh, abstract sentence, but it is connected to the idea of uh, the Opera House being a glacier. It's beginning to make sense now. I thought it was like boats, like it was in shape of boats, like it's good to start, like it's always uh, fun to guess what something is until somebody explains it to you like, oh, it's nothing. Yeah, what is nothing? <laughs> it's like what I was explaining does not match that at all. No. <laughs> so now we know. You had to explain that one building with a statue. So which one, which one is this? This is uh, the same thing. Same thing. Different company. Okay. Same same, uh, um, same story. Uh huh. Fred Olsen. They they still have their offices here. Okay. Uh, shipping. They do. Well, they used to run ferries from Norway, but now it's mainly shipping. So, so that figurehead used to be in front of a ship. Yeah. You yeah. Know, that, that, yeah. Um, what do you call that on the ship? Yeah, I forgot. Yeah, but she's thing it's always a woman. Yeah. That I know. So uh, is that the bow of the ship? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, what do they call it? It's called. It does have a word. I know. Yeah. The the uh, Norwegian Stock Exchange. I I since we are here, I would like to tell you the cutest story I know in Oslo. This is so cute. And what is this? Uh, this is the, the Stock Exchange. Strawberry exchange? The stock exchange, oh, as in money. Yeah. What is wrong with me lately? <laughs> yes, it's the strawberry exchange. exchange. They I used to exchange well, strawberries, well, blueberries, come every day sometimes and bananas. Strawberries but, yeah. For yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, yeah, yeah, yeah. I'd like to buy 500 strawberries <laughs> from uh, Tesla. <laughs> I was still thinking about the farm market strawberries. I don't know. It worked for me. Anyway, I'm sorry. Carry on. Okay. I don't know about the, what is what is the exchange rate on a banana today. I do not know. <laughs> but anyway. <laughs> it's been a while since we left the natural economy. We do use money. Yes. That is, we use yes. credit card. <laughs> but anyways, um, Carl Johan, um, you mentioned, Carl Johan, the, the main street. Now that, uh, Carl Johan, that is the name of a king uh, that Norway shared with Sweden. A little bit of a Norwegian history. We, we need to that, get some, some serious talks here also. In 1814, Norway had its own government, parliament, uh, constitution. But then we shared king and foreign policy with Sweden from 1814 till 1905. We wanted independence and therefore King Karl Johan, uh, when he became king in 1818, he did a lot for Norway uh, because he wanted to, to win the love and respect of the Norwegian people also. And he managed to do so because in 1842, uh, sorry, 1844, as he died, um, then the Norwegians decided that the main street of Oslo, leading up to the palace, it was called Palace Street originally, but it should now be renamed Karl Johan Street. So we wanted the university, which we had during the union with Denmark, 1811 already, 
Um, but in, in addition to that, we wanted a stock exchange, have more financial uh, activity. And that was one of the very first things that Carl Johan did was found the Norwegian Stock Exchange. The building, that was in 1818. The building here is from 1828. And here comes the cute part. Because the Norwegian Stock Exchange uh, from 1818 and approximately the first two decades, uh, they were in business only Monday and Thursday between 11 and 1 o'clock. Only two days a week, two hours. But we have a stock exchange. Yes, <laughs> and everybody was so happy. I find that so cute because Four now you, so you, week, you yeah. do it 24 24/7 seven seven. in the yeah. right. Yeah. And, and in those days, two hours, two days a week, it was, it was done. fantastic. Yeah. Right. That's Is that a gold statue? Uh, yeah, it's clad in gold. It's not pure gold, but it's it's like a thin layer of, of gold on top of a bronze uh, figure called the Oslo Girl. And this is City Hall. This is City Hall, yeah. So we are at the sculpture garden. We are without a guide. So we're gonna explore this sculpture garden. It's supposed to be very pretty. And I can see already it's got a lot of open spaces with trees and waterfalls and lots of sculptures. Just checking out the map. It seems like everything is in this one line. Mm -hmm. So if we just walk the straight path, yeah. we'll get the majority of it. Up to the obelisk at the top? Up to the seven. Yeah. Yeah. There's some very interesting statues here along this path. They are all like in a playful manner. But they're all naked. <laughs> they are. <laughs> There's like nakedness going on here. So, a man running with a boy on his back. There's an embrace of some sort. Just uh, different forms of expressions, I guess. I see he was big on babies hanging off of feet. Yeah. It's like there's almost a, on that, every yeah. statue there's yeah. like somebody holding multiple babies. Yeah. Some babies hanging off of feet and limbs and like, like, then that was okay. Like if he created these statues today, yeah. Like he'd be accused of being a pedophile. <laughs> you know Possibly, I mean, yeah. It wouldn't it wouldn't fly. Interesting. All right, I'm not so I can take up these bodies. This part of the garden smells like roses. You just walk into this perfume of roses as you come down from the stairs. For the roses, I wish you could smell them. That, that, the aroma is just wonderful. Really wonderful. Um, I think that the sculpture here is very interesting. I think after a while it becomes a little disturbing. But, <laughs> but, uh, but it's interesting. I, I want to read up more now on uh, uh, Legal, the sub legal, and uh, who is the artist, and find out sort of you know what he was trying to say. 
in all this interesting sculpture. But uh, but it's a beautiful place, and I'm really glad we, we came to see it. It wasn't on our original itinerary, but I'm glad we uh, followed a recommendation from one of Oscar's uh, colleagues to come and come and see it. Cause it's definitely worth the trip. If you're in if you're in Oslo, come see it. What do you, what's your rapper name? Uh, it's Christine Blir Rapper, which literally means Christine becomes rapper. Ooh. Let's hear something. Are you on Spotify? I am. I am, and I, but I rap in Norwegian and Swedish and Danish. Okay. Can, uh-huh. you, can, you, can you drop something? <laughs> can you drop something for us real quick? <laughs> yeah. Let, let's hear what you got. Some free song for us. <laughs> if each of you did like a guest thing on each other's music, because you met in Norway with them right. as well? That's you? Yeah. Uh, <laughs> maybe you want to go out to thank you for, for sharing. Yeah. And um, yeah, with the, with the cool, cool match. <laughs> <laughs> so um, this is the sauna. And uh, it's actually you. Oh, wow. Who, uh, <laughs> it's still good. You're, uh, you're the guardians of the flames. <laughs> oh, you. Uh, there's wood on the side here, and you just shove it in. Uh, just keep an eye on it. Ooh, it's hot. And uh, it yeah, it's hot. So uh, it's better that you air out just by pulling the door open. And um, if you want to put something there, you can either put this bucket or the or the trash can if you like want it want it to stay open. Sure. Um, and I put some essential oils here, um, okay. eucalyptus and sweet orange. Oh, uh, sweet orange. Yeah, and I together. really, actually I really love to mix them. I was just going to say, mix with yeah. yeah, and normally I start with the eucalyptus and then sweet orange to like okay. open with the minty and like uh, close it off or soften it with the citrusy. Yeah. Uh, and then you just take a spoonful and just drop three to four drops uh, is uh, really uh, enough um, for it to Three to four drops or three from the cup? Yeah, so... so Not three cups, but... No, oh, you, oh no, no, okay, that, yeah, okay, yeah, okay. Sorry. So just, uh, sorry. Yeah, sorry. just three drops in one... Uh, in one spoon. <laughs> I'm glad yeah. somebody else is listening. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. we got That's you. That's okay, I will handle you. this one. <laughs> and you. in here, you uh, sit or oh, lay uh, on your towels. We brought towels, yeah. Perfect. Yeah. And you're, uh, you can bring drinks inside the sauna. Uh, but it's too hot here for snacks, me right now. I need to yeah. Know. But snacks. It is hot. <laughs> it is hot. <laughs> How do you survive that? <laughs> but after the water, it will it make much good. more sense. Yeah. Yeah. And now it's like, why would you why would want you to do it? <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, but if you brought snacks or food, you can enjoy it either here or we on do. deck or. Yeah. Or upstairs, and if you like, you can stay on the roof while we're cruising. Oh, that'd be nice. You can also jump from the roof oh, ooh, and you would like that. swim. <laughs> and the most important uh, safety thing is that you ask me if the boat is still before you jump in. Okay. Yeah. But I will also tell you, like, okay, now we're ready, and uh, I will then take the ladder down. So when it's down, uh, it's swimming time. When it's up, it's cruising time. Okay. Cool. Cool. And yeah. in here, you uh, sit or lay uh, on your towels. We brought towels. Yeah. Perfect. And you're, uh, you can bring drinks inside the sauna. Uh, but it's too high here for snacks. Me right now. I need to yeah. But snacks. It is hot. <laughs> it is hot. <laughs> How do you survive that? But after the water, it will it make much good. more sense. Yeah. Yeah. Now it's like, why would you, why would you put yourself do through this? <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, but if you brought snacks or food, you can enjoy it either here or on deck or yeah or upstairs. And if you like, you can stay on the roof while we're cruising. Oh, that'd be nice. You can also jump from the roof oh, and you would like that. swim. <laughs> and the most important uh, safety thing is that you ask me if the boat is still before you jump in. Okay. Yeah. But I will also tell you like, okay, now we're ready. And uh, I will then take the ladder down. So when it's down, uh, it's swimming time. When it's up, it's cruising time. Okay. Cool. cool. All right, so as you can tell, we are on a sauna boat. 
that's going to be cruising around in the fjord. Uh, we just came from the uh, the sculpture park, as you saw, uh, but we had to adjust the schedule for the day today because we did not do the museum. I know we said we were going to do the uh, uh, Viking Museum during the day, but uh, that's changed because we didn't have time to do the Viking Museum and, this, and also do the rest of the things that we did today. So we had to cut that out. So now we, uh, we had to make the schedule for the sauna boat, which we're on right now, uh, which is going to be in there. I was recording out earlier. Uh, not knowing that there's no SD card in here, so <laughs> found out the hard way. I wasted all that air for nothing. But here we go. We're gonna start this thing, and uh, we'll be moving shortly. So it should be fun. Crier's walking here. right there is where you jump off to jump in the water there's wind right now so I don't know if you can hear me uh, but yeah this should be a lot of fun yeah. Pose for me. It is hot as you know what in here. Whew. Good Lord. I'm steaming up. Anyway, I'm gonna turn off the camera for copyright reasons. I don't wanna get a strike. Oh, it feels good. Yeah, right? <laughs> My hair is gonna hate me after this one. <laughs> after that heat, it feels good. Yeah, right? Yeah. But you just have to get used to it because the difference is so big. But like when I think after like 10 seconds, then you're like, yeah. Oh, okay. oh. oh that feels good. This, the sauna will feel good after it was, too. It was very, very cold when I first oh. got in. Um, For some reason, I'm sucking under the boat. I don't know why. But <laughs> the boat's moving, though. Yeah, it's because it's a big wind, so it's not the same current. That's yeah. why I'm not on the boat. <laughs> That's why we're out here. Oh. 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 This is nice. This is very nice. <laughs> No complaints, none at all. I'm a breaststroker. <laughs> I used to be one of those. <laughs> Did you see your butt? No. Oh my god! You missed it, son. I was busy relaxing. I'm sure he said something disrespectful. <sighs> I did not. I just said I used to be one of those. That's all I said. I said, I said no stroker. dirty words. He said, he said, yeah, I used to be one of those. <laughs> no. Back when you was young and single and liked to oh. mingle, long before me. <laughs> But I'll jump in. Yeah. Like, you know. I'm the, the adrenaline. So then he did it two more times. You went off backwards, right? Yeah. Oh. The backwards was scary. Because yeah. like they're like jump like you're jumping onto a bed. So yeah. in my mind I convinced myself that there was something behind me. Yeah. So I said jump. I'm like, alright, cool. I jump yeah, as yeah. soon as I go past oh. the platform, I'm like, uh oh. <laughs> <laughs> There's a great photo of me somewhere. I'll find it for you later. Oh. But yeah. Because the place where he bungee jumped is the original bridge in New Zealand where bungee jumping was invented. Oh. So, the one that I did, they tie you by your feet. Yeah. So well, feet where it was invented for the Western world. Yeah, for the Because jump, bungee jumping has been done in many cultures. Yeah. Uh, but, on the African continent for a long time. They tie like vines on there. 
uh, and ankles and then they jump. Yeah. Yeah, but they were the first white men. <laughs> yeah. It was like it was like Christopher Columbus. Yeah. yeah right. They discovered <laughs> bungee jumping just like that. <laughs> I want to see you make that in one shot. You can't do it. You can't park it like five times. Oh, <laughs> you gotta go yeah. in no, and gonna, spin it in. I'm gonna do it in one. Really? <laughs> hit the yeah. drift real quick. Just like <laughs> <laughs> Only once. That's your spot right there. Yeah. Yeah, especially when very I'm good, traveling. Christina. Very yes, good. Sir. Pat Thank yourself you. on the back. Yeah, it was wonderful. <laughs> Look at that. Wow, she can drive a boat. You get me to skip it for a while. That was a lot of fun. Maybe just like take another skipper and we'll take Christina and go <laughs> right? back out. That was freaking awesome. A lot of fun doesn't begin to cover it. That, that was, was so much fun. And when you went, when you went like right from the sauna and just dove into the water, jumped into the water. It was, oh my God, it was so invigorating. It was spectacular. And our, our captain, our skipper was so great, Christina. Right. She was lovely. And it was just a wonderful experience. She even had essential oils to put in the sauna so it could smell like eucalyptus and yeah. orange. And I didn't even want to really do this whole sauna thing, but I am telling you, I loved it. Come to Norway, you have gotta do a floating sauna. Yeah, it was fun. Dude. That sauna was incredible. I, she said she didn't even really want to do it. I don't know why. I was looking forward to that. Because I love water. I love swimming. And I like saunas. So I was like, sauna on a boat in the water? This sounds wonderful. So we went on a boat in the water. And it was just, it was awesome. Our guy, our skipper, Christina, was into music. She makes music. Actually, um, I have some of her music. We'll plug it. I'll put like a... Uh, what she goes by she's on spotify it'll be like right here of course she right she, that you'll put it right here for me i will yeah he will what am i putting up there? he's gonna put in, her music right here, here. here you <laughs> do you see it <laughs> oh damn no, see it. <laughs> but yeah so she makes music we might we but might it's all in norwegian it's all in norse so. yeah but we might we might collab so get some two whole languages like what me and Bilal used to do yeah yeah that'd be yeah. cool i had this friend Bilal. he spoke french she used to rap french on some of my songs on soundcloud um but yeah, it was a really, it was really, really, really fun. I learned, she taught me how to dive. I've never dove before. Like I've never been able to dive. I've always been like scared of it. It's been like a mental block. But she was like, just do it. So I just did it. And I was like, yo, this is cool. And now I know how to dive. So that's pretty nifty. But yeah, I had a great time. I feel so relaxed. I'm like at inner peace right now. Yeah, like everything is great. Nothing could possibly go wrong right now. You know, like just life. Is good. And Life yeah, is good. It's only our second day. Life is good. And it's only our second day. All right, guys. This is it for this vlog. I'm going to close it out right here. Uh, Thank you guys for watching. Don't forget Oslo. to subscribe. Please subscribe. Please subscribe. Please subscribe. 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 Do it right now. Button. Hit the button. Hit the red button. <laughs> With your nose. <laughs> All right. We're done. Uh, thank you for watching. Uh, tomorrow is another episode. So uh, we'll be back. There's more to come. We're if doing we more things. Far, thanks for watching. We appreciate it. There's more Love things. You. We're doing more things tomorrow, so it's not over yet, and we're gonna be in Norway for a while. Not so. over yet. This is day two. Uh, just day two. Not only that, we're going to the North Pole, so that should be fun too. All right, guys. Peace. <laughs>